This week, there were violent clashes across Bolivia between security forces and supporters of former President Evo Morales. There remains intense anger in the Latin American nation after a right-wing opposition party used the military to force President Morales from office. His opponents claimed he tried to rig November's presidential election. However, several independent studies have found that wasn't true, that there was no interference in the election, that Morales was overwhelmingly supported by the public. It's been nine months since the coup. Promised elections have been repeatedly delayed and questions remain around who supported the overthrow of a democratically elected leader and why. I spoke earlier with Mark Weisbrot, the co-director of the Center for Economic and Policy Research in Washington, D.C. Thanks for joining Sky News Your World. Nine months since Evo Morales was deposed, we're still yet to see new elections promised by the interim president, Añez. She claims that the new postponement is due to safety risks due to the pandemic. How concerned are you about these delays? Well, the delays, I, I think, are being used by the government to stay in power. And, in fact, polls show that they would lose if they had an election. And this is, I should emphasize, this is a, an illegitimate government to begin with that came to power from a military coup uh, on November 10th. And that's why you see people in the streets now, because the election that they promised, they said she was just going to be there to set up new elections, and then she's running for president again. She stays there all this time. And then she uh, doesn't hold the election. They postponed it three times already. And so people are in the streets, and they're saying, you know, we want our elections. And the free and fair election uh, would uh, at least... Uh, take care of what the people want and, and feel is their, their right. Now, if one is to believe that President Morales was unjustly ousted from office, why was he removed and who supported his removal? Well, it was, the, it was basically a lot of the same elite that ruled the country uh, all the way up until Evo Morales was elected. Uh, at first in uh, 2005, the first time. And it changed a lot, and the, the economy did extremely well, too. So there were big increases in living standards, but this time they trickled down uh, to the majority uh, of the country. And uh, the uh, even though the elite uh, did, uh, the white elite, and these are really racist people, by the way, in the government now, uh, the president, Agnes, has said terribly racist things about savages and all kinds of things that you can see in the news and uh they didn't like they didn't like this it was you know it was a lot like the end of apartheid in south africa but uh this elite had the backing of the most powerful country in the world as you can see from the trump administration but they even had uh, before a lot and they they figured they could come back and so they never accepted uh, majority rule. What lessons do you think we can draw from what we've seen recently in Bolivia? Well, I think the biggest lesson is that uh, people all over the world and governments have to push back when something like this happens. And that's where you've seen a real failure. Uh, first of all, the Trump administration just supported the coup, but so did a lot of the biggest uh, media outlets, even here in the United States. In the first uh, decade of the 21st century, uh, Latin Americans elected a whole set of uh, really independent uh, governments. They were mostly left of center governments. And uh, the United States government has been following a, a, a policy of containment and rollback, a kind of Cold War policy to get rid of them all. And this is just uh, one of the uh, regime change operations that our government has pulled off in the 21st century. Mark Weisbrot, thanks for joining Sky News Your World. Thank you.